Hello, I'm just checking if we are in here. So, hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Attorney Sharp Rally for the Sharp Rally Law Show. Sorry today, <laughs> I just kind of missed the intro. So, for those who are listening, this is uh, we are we are going to discuss about uh, immigration law, and I have Michael on the board with me, and uh, I hope you can hear me well. And uh, the st- uh, we will be opening the studio lines in a few minutes, but. Before I start, anything I'm telling you today is for educational purposes only. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, today, of course, we have the big news of the visa bulletin came out, um, and it seems like it gets better uh, this month, I mean, for month of October, and uh, we have uh, this uh, leap forward for India EB1 going to 2016, which is good. Uh, we were 2012. And also India EB2 goes to 2009, March. And EB3 a jump uh, to uh, January 2009. Seems EB3 and EB2 are now very close together. So this is a welcoming news, although it could have been better. We were hoping that EB1 will be current, but it didn't, but it came close. So. For those who are eligible for the adjustment of status, please feel free to contact our office if you need help, 510-7425-887. And, of course, if you need help on anything else, just give us a call again. So, And then the website to check, attorneyonair.com, attorneyonair.com. Before I talk a little bit about other subjects, let me take one call, uh, Michael. This is Shabra, you're live. Hello? Uh, hello, sir. Good morning. Hi. Good morning, Hi. sir. Yeah. So uh, I'm currently on H1, and uh, my wife is on STEM OPT, and uh, I've applied for H1 transfer to an end client and uh, H4 and H4 ED for my wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I am planning to uh, uh, send her par- uh, send my wife's parents, like my in-laws, for a visiting visa. Uh, they were rejected mm-hmm. last year, and uh, we don't know the exact reason. The only question they asked was uh, whether my wife uh, studied and uh, did masters, and they asked two questions and they rejected the visa. So now uh, my question is, uh, uh, since my H1 transfer and our H4 is in progress, should I wait until the uh, new H1B petition and her H4 status is changed when I submit the DS-160 form or... Uh, can I go ahead and submit the DS-160 form with the current uh, status? Mine is on H1 okay. and she's on F1 STEM OPT. Mm. Okay, that's a very interesting question because technically none of the stuff should affect the visitor visa because it has nothing to do with it. However, because now things are working in their own manners, it's always good to avoid any kind of complications when you have something pending. Having said that, okay. your parents' petition has nothing really to do with your situation status, except if you put the affidavit of support, etc. But okay. um, there's no exact answer for it. I just recommend not to kind of uh, have too many things going at the same time. So it's better to let one clear than move on. But this is the thing. Um, H4, H4 EAD is taking a long time right now to process. So Even in premium? Might be, there's no real premium for H4. H4... Uh, only the H1 has premium, but even that now it's gone for some case, most cases. So uh, the H4 EAD, as a matter of courtesy and Obama, they used to do the whole thing together, but there's no real H4 premium. They, they, they can decide to do H4 under premium or they can just keep it the normal way. And most cases right now we are seeing it's, it's 50-50. Some are going premium, so are just going normal. So... If you look at it from the uh, from the bad uh, perspective, it will go the normal route. Okay. Okay. Then uh, I'm a little uh, not uh, sure whether I have to send them a visa with the current status only. So or should I wait yeah, till next week? Just, to be honest, it should not affect affect it. But now they're looking at all the factors. Um, uh-huh. So. If they want to come, you can always give it a shot. It won't affect your wife, but they might get a a, a denial. But ultimately, it's not um, it's not something which is for sure going to create a denial. Okay. 
Usually they use INA 214B to deny, which is immigrant intent. And that's what probably they gave them last time. 214 or really something, I think. Last time. I'm, I'm sorry? I think 214 or uh, some document they two, used last time. Two, two, two one, four b I think. It's most of the time that's what they use. There's no real answer for it because that should not even be affecting it. But now they are, they're making everything kind of related. So you can always give it a shot because it won't affect your wife. But if they get denied, they can always reapply. Okay? Yeah, the reason is uh, it's kind of important for them to come here as uh, we are expecting. So that's why I was uh, okay, thinking okay. whether I have to send them with their current F1 status or wait until H4 is changed and then send or how do I Yeah, the H4 change is not going to be, it might not happen soon. So I don't I don't count too much on it. It might happen, but it, it's not. So, And plus, visitor visa is a very uh, kind of tricky visa because it, it's very, it's at the discretion of the U.S. Embassy. So... They give, depending who is the officer looking at it, some officer might give it, some officers might not, just not give it. So it's, um, if they really have to come because of the baby is getting born and you want them to be here, mm-hmm. then go ahead and file it because it won't affect your wife's case. And just because they're okay. going to have a denial now doesn't mean they cannot reapply it. Okay? Okay. Okay, so last like time, one thing we noticed was that uh, we kept uh, their three months travel. So somebody suggested don't keep three months, just keep uh, 15 days. And uh, don't uh, mention that I would be uh, sponsoring their tickets. Let them uh, be the sponsors for their travel and things. Well, usually, yeah, it makes sense because coming for three months vacation is not something that is... Uh, but unfortunately, I cannot give you those advice because these are mm-hmm. not really a real uh, reasons. These are just people have noticed that and they have yeah. made uh, these conclusions. So, yeah, definitely it okay. just makes sense that if you're coming too long, etc. But all those are factors, so it all depends on the officer. If you put it together, okay. you might be... It, it's luck. Honestly, I don't mm-hmm. even take those cases because even you pay me a lot of money, there's nothing I can really do. It's just your luck, Okay. 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 Sounds good. Good luck you. to you. Yeah, You're welcome. Thank Let you. me take another caller, Michael. Chapter 11 here. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Hello. This is Shah. You're live in here. Yeah, so, uh, Shah, uh, uh, last week I called you, a few weeks back I called you and uh, I asked for my wife's name change after the marriage and I did mm-hmm. that. So, uh, I have a question that I now I'm going to apply for the EAD. So, is there mm-hmm. anything that I need to take care of? Uh, because uh, probably my I-797 name will be different, uh, and the uh, and the name in the passport now will be different. So, is there anything that I need to take care? Of? What do you mean take care? Okay, you you applied for a name change. Where sorry, I don't remember the facts because I get so many calls. So. Is you you applied for a name change at the court, or you applied for a name change just like that? No, just a passport and maiden name change to married name change. Okay. So it's not a big problem. Just inform the Social Security. And also when you apply, just mention that. And also when they ask for other names, just put her previous names as a maiden name. That's all. Okay, okay, sure. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. Because when you get married, it's not that complicated. It's when you change your name completely, then it's an issue. Okay, so okay. I don't know if I have more. Yeah. Good luck to you. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if I have more callers, Michael. This is Shapra. You're live in here? Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, as soon as we started, we had some callers. And the video lines is still open, 510-657. 1170-610-657-1170. And also, um, my my heart goes to, to the people of of North and South Carolina and even Virginia and, and on the East Coast with the big Florence uh, storm that is coming. So I couldn't forget to mention that because this is one of those unique storms in history. And I will, I just wanted to, to say... Um, years to you guys so hopefully things uh, get better and uh, it, it is really a tricky uh, storm I, I grew up on, on, on an island where they have a lot of storms but uh, 
we knew the how it feels when when you have those and uh, I stay safe everybody so I just wanted to mention that so and I know we have listeners there um, on, 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 the, uh, on the East Coast so just wanted to mention that now as a footnote so now let's get back to immigration law as I was saying visa built-in seems to be better for next month and I recommend if you are eligible for any kind of uh, adjustment of status or filing EB1, this is your chance. Go ahead, give us a call, 510-742-5887. Let me take another caller, Michael. This is Are you live in here? Hello? Hey, hi, Shah Parari. How are you? I'm doing well, sir. I'm doing well. What can I do for you? Yeah, actually, I'm having some query. Now my wife has uh, got one baby girl, so... But we are mm-hmm. in political asylum. Uh, is there any way can we invite any families, members from India? Or how, how can you help me out? Okay. First, congratulations for the baby. And then you are on Thank political you. asylum. You have, you have filed a political asylum. That's what you said. Hello. I think you, 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 your radio is on in the background. So yeah, yeah. can you please turn it off? Because there's an echo. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I'm listening to you. Yeah, Hello? I have a work permit also. I'm working already. So presently I'm looking at, uh, like, uh, on my wife's part, uh, she's not able to do any work. So I can uh, uh, invite anybody from India. What do you mean invite? You mean bring someone to work? Or just someone? To someone... Look after my wife or kids? Mm, it's not that easy to bring people like that um, because those visas that requires you to bring people are usually um, under J1 and they require they are very difficult to do it from India unless they are very qualified, uh, have bachelor's degree, etc. So it's it's, uh, it's better find someone here <laughs> unless you have you want someone to come. Uh, well. Technically, nobody can really come and work on a visitor visa or something. That's not allowed. So um, basically, there's no real visa for that except the J-1. But the J-1 is very difficult to get. And most people who have got the J-1 nanny visa for the baby uh, have to be qualified. And they have to have a degree, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Nice talking to you. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. Another caller, Michael. This is Shapra. You are live in here. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi. My name is Krish. Um, I have a slightly Hi, different Krish. question. Um, mm-hmm. I have a green card, and uh, I want to know: um, Is it possible to um, live outside the country for about a couple of years for a family uh, reason, and then come back uh, and maintain the green card status? Yes. Um, in order to do that, you have to take a re-entry permit. The way you do that is you file a Form I-131, and as soon as you get the fingerprint done, you can actually leave, and hopefully it gets approved. That will allow you to to maintain the green card for two years um, until uh, you come back without losing the green card. However it doesn't count towards your citizenship time. So when you come back, you have to start over, usually for four years and one year before you file for your citizenship. Right. And uh, is, is, uh, will the Board of Entry allow me to come back after a couple of years, or is that the discretion of the, the officer? No, no, it's not the discretion. If you have a reentry permit and you're coming within that time, usually it's not discretionary. They, they usually allow you unless you commit some crimes or something. But that, if, it is, if you don't have the reentry permit approved and it's not valid, then yes, it's at their discretion. And what is the maximum time for that reentry? Usually it's two years. They give one year or two years, depending on the situation. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Good luck to you. So Thanks, let me sir. take another call. So this is this is Sharp Rai. You're live in here. Hello? 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 I think Hello? Hold on, Michael. Hello, hi, this is Shah. Hi there, it's a very informative show. Thank you for doing it for the community. 
Um, my question is, my brother just came up uh, here, and how long it will take uh, that he will get his green card? What do you mean, your brother just came here? How, how did he come? Uh, he come and he... he As a permanent resident, yeah, on green card. So we are expecting his oh, okay, green so, card. Okay, okay, so he got his stamp of I-551, and he came on an immigrant visa, right, to family petition, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, usually it comes like six, seven weeks later, but right now they're a little bit delayed in the card production. So he is on a green card because that I-551 is a temporary green card, except the card itself, uh, the production takes like six weeks to eight weeks. So he should get it soon, don't worry. And if you don't get it, uh, just give them a call. They will they will send it to you. Uh, okay, okay. Thank you so much, sir. It's a very good You're show. Welcome. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much for your kind words. I really appreciate that. Thank you. We have another call. Let me take another caller. This is Shabra. You are live in here. Oh, hey, hi, Shah. Sure. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, You're welcome. So, yeah, I have a question. Uh, so, I am currently on H1 visa. It's valid till August 2020. And I want to move from H1 to H4 as my husband has uh, H1 uh, and I want for your proof. So, uh, my question is like, is there any way uh, while our uh, doing change of status from H1 to H4 uh, to put effective date that my, like, H1 will be, uh, H4 will be valid from that effective date. Yes, and uh, so how soon I can stop working on H1 once uh, I apply for change of status? Yes. So if you're applying change of status, the way, the effective date, um, you can technically, if you file it, don't put the effective date, then you can stop working pretty much right away because while the H4 is pending, it gives you a period of uh, of stay, uh, authorized period of stay. However, when you put a date later, it creates a little bit a tricky situation because then you're not really asking for that until it, it the date becomes effective. So then you will have to wait for that date. For example, let's say you put January as effective date, then you can stop working as as uh, as from January even if it is mm -hmm. not approved. But if you put it like a normal without the future effective date, you can stop working right away as soon as the package is received by the USCIS. Okay. Uh, so okay. Uh, one more question, Shah. So uh, if I applied H4, uh, should I apply with uh, H4 and H4 EAD together? Uh, will yes, that, uh, yes. that get approved yes. at the same time? or? Uh... I highly recommend you doing that. Uh, approve at the same time is is uh, uh, it depends right on the case some cases like you will get everything together some cases like you will get your ead like two three weeks later but the rule is that until the h4 is approved they cannot issue the ead so usually there's a little bit of uh, time lapse between the two and it can be three weeks it can be two months depending on the how far they process the case. But the problem is that as soon as the H4 is approved, until you get the EAD, you have to stop working. Okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Okay. Good luck to you. Thank you so much. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. Do we have more callers? This is Sharp, right? You're live in here. Hello? Okay. So thank you so much for calling, and I really appreciate your kind words. And as you know, things on immigration now has become really, really hectic. Now, the one of the things that um, has been effective now since not one, a bunch of them on September 11, and they pick their date. So that date basically, um, number one, we have the situation of premium getting cut off for many cases, and that's going to create a lot of problem. People who are shifting their, their jobs and mobility of H-1Bs will be limited. And also for people who, who basically fell out of status and want to go back in status, uh, the fact that it's not premium, companies might not wait on them when they file for their case, especially if you're work, they're working for consulting companies. So this is going to be a big difficulty. The other big difficulty we're going to see is that they say they will start kind of, the, at their discretion, of course, denying cases uh, if they want to based on without issuing an, 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 a, a, a request for evidence. And that creates a big problem because the way the case is presented is going to be really big. And if you look at the 
the statistics that was published, and I think I have that on my website or on my YouTube channel, um, they, they mentioned that 72%, for example, of Indian cases, uh, people from India had, had an, uh, a request for evidence, uh, a RFE. And that means basically if we follow this logic, 73% of people are going to get denied. <laughs> that's that's the problem that we're going to see, and a lot of people now are very very worried, and they have good reasons to to be worried. So one of the things that we recommend, um, number one uh, tips I will give you, is whenever you 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 have be getting expired, or you want to do um, uh, a, a transfer, number one if it is expiring, file you can file your extension six months in advance. Since there's no premium, I recommend that you file it six months in advance anyway, because number one, if it gets denied and the denial happens before your original H-1B expires, you have a chance to refile. And number two, it gives you some kind of leeway to, to work with. And um, also, um, since there's no premium, the, it is important that before you move to another job, uh, don't take chances of moving to another job without having an approval. But of course, that creates a problem because uh, it's very hard to get a job where they will wait for you uh, for four months or five months um, on the approval notice to, to ask you to join in. So all those problems are becoming really kind of relevant. Again, it, it was relevant, but now it's combined with the fact that we are not going to see any RFEs and that will create situations where cases might be denied on really unfair reasons. So uh, watch out for that. Things are going to unfold really fast, of course, and, um, and we thought it couldn't get worse, but it's getting worse and worse. But at the same time, having said that, we are still dealing with a reasonable uh, uh, entity. They still, uh, if you look at the statistics also, again, although there were 73% of of our fees, only 50 percent, uh, only um, I think 21 percent or 23 percent of cases from India were denied, which basically means there was still uh, six, uh, 77 percent of cases that were approved, and that gives us some hope, although it's not great numbers because it should have been higher than that. So. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I highly recommend that you hire a good lawyer to do your case because we are seeing that more and more, and many people are hiring non-lawyers to do their cases because it's cheaper, of course. But that, first of all, is not allowed. It's not legal. And that means if tomorrow that, uh, that group or organization or whatever is doing paperwork for immigration without a license, if they get busted, all their cases will be sent for review. And we have seen that before, even for lawyers who are acting uh, really um, uh, with no conscience, uh, kind of. Uh, when you hire them to do your work, you ultimately end up by getting in trouble. They get in trouble, and you get in trouble, too. So be very careful on that. Number two, even experienced lawyers right now are kind of hitting their head against the wall. But having said that, we're still getting a lot of cases approved, especially EB1. And on that, I have to con congratulate the team, especially Sharif, uh, the Washington, D.C. team. They are very, very good with EB-1. If you need help on EB-1, please give us a call, 510-742-5887. So now what is next? And that's the, 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 the million-dollar question. What are we going to see that's going to affect people negatively again? And, uh, and a lot of people are very worried. Uh, what do they do? Do they stay in the U.S.? Do they take chances? Do they live in fear? Uh, what are the options? Well, the fear has always been there, okay? If you look at it, even in the past, people have been living in fear, especially in, the, in that kind of uh, uh, environment. But having said that, uh, there was still hope to, to deal with things, especially if you have our fees, uh, where you have a chance to, to fight them. It's just like... You're arguing with someone, and that person don't give you a chance to answer. And that's how, what we're going to be facing when it comes to immigration now. And uh, hopefully, uh, if you look at the memo, it doesn't say they will not issue RFEs. It just say 
they have a right to deny cases without issuing RFEs. And many of the RFEs we are seeing were based on a specialty occupation, based on, on so many uh, things that could be fought and doesn't really make uh, logical sense, unfortunately. So uh, the question is that what happens if you just get a denial, for example, on a specialty occupation, or they don't believe it's an specialty occupation, and you have done everything to prove that, what do you do next? Uh, one of the options, of course, is to, refile, uh, to, to file a motion to reconsider, which is an, a, a problem. And also the second one is to refile the case, which is another problem, especially now there's no premium and if you went out the status already. And the third option is, of course, one of them, which a lot of people have not taken, but to file a lawsuit in federal court, especially for H-1B, et cetera. Um, I don't handle those cases anymore. I used to. But if you get a good lawyer who can fight those, you might see yourself in a situation where actually you can um, not only succeed, but you, you, it might create ultimately a precedent for other people. So I highly recommend that you check with the lawyer your options before you move forward. And again, the studio lines are still open. Michael is mentioning that to me, 510-657-1170, 510-657-1170. Six five seven one one seven zero, and we are talking about immigration law. This is Attorney Sharperari from the Sharperari Law Group, and anything I'm telling you today is my opinion. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. Uh, we have another caller right now. Hello, hi Manish. Hi, uh, Rika. I have a question here about uh, yes. this year H1. Uh, you got picked up in the lottery, but uh, mm -hmm. there's no approval yet. Uh, uh, is there any timeline or anything? <laughs> yeah, the, well, there's no... The timeline is usually before October and you get an approval. However, we have seen cases, even in the past, where cases will go up to one year later, then you see an, uh, an approval. So the deadline, unfortunately, is not really set because especially if they send RFEs or they are doing background check, they can hold on the case um, even for, for one year. I've seen sometimes one and a half year. So there's no yeah, deadline really for them. Yeah, the update says the case was received. Uh, I don't know whether... Yeah, you will yeah. not know, unfortunately. Um, so what you can do, maybe you can have your your um, a lawyer contact them and check the status. But that's it. <laughs> okay, thanks. Sorry. You're welcome. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's another big issue that we see. Um, so we, unfortunately, I think we have one caller, right, uh, Michael? Okay, sorry, sorry for that. So Michael is telling me no. So I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. My my throat is dry, dry now. I've <laughs> been talking a lot today, and um, we have been uh, talking about all those issues, all those issues that were kind of uh, look minor in the past. Now are going to have is, is having an impact on people, especially when you're seeing um, cases right and left getting denied or cases getting huge requests for evidence, and many of those requests for evidence, unfortunately, were, uh, were asking the same questions again and again, and now no request for evidence might equal, unfortunately, to a denial. And what do you do next if you get denied? Like I said, there are three options. Number one, uh, I mentioned that earlier, uh, is, of course, to file a motion to reopen. But just to let you know, a motion to reopen doesn't give you any kind of status or any kind of period of stay, authorized period of stay. For example, if you refile a case on time, you are still good on your H-1 or any kind of visa, you are able to stay while it's pending. But a motion to reopen doesn't grant that. So be careful on that. A lot of people get confused on that. Second one, of course, is to refile the case. But the problem is that if you already fall out of status and you're refiling the case, the case will be processed as a consular processing. And since there is no there are no actually uh, premium, you might uh, find yourself in a situation with by, by, since it's going to take maybe four or five months and uh, the client or the, the, uh, 
company might not be waiting a new, a new one for that. So that's an issue that causes another problem. And, of course, the third option, which many people don't really take, is to sue the government in federal court. And that's one thing that is interesting. People don't know that, but you can take an action against the, against the USCIS in federal court stating that your H-1B was uh, wrongfully, uh, capriciously denied. But the problem is that first you have to get an attorney who knows how to do that. And number two, you also have to have a good case. And you, might, you also will want to have uh, a lot of people are scared of doing it. So these are the options, unfortunately, that we are left now. So what, what do we see the future? And, um, of course, uh, a lot of people waiting on their green card. Visa built in move forward. But will it move backward? We'll talk a little bit about that. And uh, the number to the studio, I think, Mike, I don't know how much time is left, but you can still call, I think, the 510-657-1170. That's the studio line. Or you can call our office for a full consultation, 510-742-5887. The website to check, attorneyonair.com, attorneyonair.com. I also suggest that you subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Sharp Pirali Law, S H A H P E E R A L Y L A W dot com, uh, not dot com, Pirali Law, Sharp Pirali Law, YouTube dot com slash Sharp Pirali Law. Please subscribe to it because that's the fastest way for me to pass messages. Like I said, recently uh, it's been too hectic for me to write long, long articles. Plus, writing a long analysis is not really worth anymore because unless it is analyzing a, a full visa, but issues is better to give you flash information because things are changing on a daily basis now, and you have noticed that probably. So I recommend if you need help, please give us a call, 510-742-5887. Michael, is letting me know that someone has some you are you there? Hello? Hi, hi, Samia. Hello? Hello? Okay, I think I lost the caller, Michael. Okay, so feel free to call again, 510-657-1170, 510-657-1170, the number to the studio. And um, now we are going to talk a little bit about another topic, just uh, and then we'll go back to immigration. Another topic that we handle uh, is, of course, Debt settlement, this is very related to our community and the difficulties people are facing now in this, uh, in this new world. And one of those difficulties is, the, of course, the difficulties of, hey, do I stay in the United States or go back? And then what happens to my credit card? What happens to my debt? What happens to my car? What happens to my house? Well, your house is still your, your car is still yours, um, but you still have the loan. And, and credit cards. And if you're not working in the U.S., it might be hard to pay back. So one of the things we can do for you is negotiate those debts. Uh, you don't have to be leaving the U.S. for us to negotiate that, by the way, but uh, this is what a reality coming in. So check our, our, our blog, yourdebtsettlementattorney.com, or call us, 510-742-5887, for us to do an assessment for you. Let me take another call. I'm this is Shah, you're live in here. Hi, uh, sure, this is Samia speaking. Hi, Samia. Hi, uh, I had a question regarding applying for uh, So uh, I just wanted to know, like, I mean, how things are and how uh, long it is actually taking for uh, getting the approval. So you're talking about the H4 EAD? Yes, H4 EAD. Okay. Are you apply, applying only for the EAD? You are already an H4, or are you shifting from another visa to H4 and H4 EAD? Yeah, so I was on S1, and I had a H1 approval as well, uh, but then I had to uh, quit my job, and now I'm already on H4. So I know I missed out applying the EAD along with the H4 transfer, uh, like, you know, with my husband's H1. So now I just have to apply for the EAD. It's taking, for the EAD alone, it's taking around 90 days, 100 days maybe less, but the H4, H4 EAD, unfortunately, some cases we are seeing a wait of eight months to nine months. Sorry, up till what? EAD itself takes like, I'm sorry? So your voice is somehow low. I'm sorry about that. Oh, so you okay, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The H4 
is taking a long time. But since you already have the H4, the EAD itself is not taking that long, maybe 90 days. So I would recommend you file ASAP because the problem is that if you wait, H4 EAD might be gone. So go ahead and file it now. It's taking around 90 days to get it. <coughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck to you. Good luck. Yeah, bye. Mm -hmm. So, bye. So I think uh, we have another caller, right, Michael? This is Shabra, you're live in here? No, okay. So we don't have too much time to go before I have a meet on the air. So I'm going to recap for today, and we won't be taking more callers than Michael. For those who want to call, feel free to call our office, 510-742-5887, the website, attorneyonair.com, and also the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Sharperali Law. Please subscribe to it and pass it to your friends because uh, I, I try to update it at least on a weekly basis or twice or three times a week with new information, although the information are pouring now. So, and, uh, and that will be your best bet to basically get information what's going on and, and update and my perspective on cases right now. So in the beginning, we were talking, of course, about the good kind of quote unquote, the good news on the visa built in. We saw a jump for EB1, EB2, and EB3 for India and even China. Uh, I have not really checked the family petitions. I am focusing on, on, on employment base. So that gives us some courage So for those who are qualified. So that means if you don't give up on your green card, if you qualify for EB1, or if you want to know if you qualify for EB1, for example, EB1A for extraordinary ability, EB1B for scientists and researchers, outstanding scientists and researchers, or EB1C for intra transfer managers, I highly recommend that you, you give it a shot. Don't just kind of uh, say uh, it's going to be backlog again, because this is the thing. Uh, one thing which I really got upset last time, someone called me and got upset. They said, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not telling the truth because it's, it's 150 years for, for someone to get the green card. That's not really true. Nobody knows that because a visa built-in doesn't behave like this calculation that they made. I think more realistic is 20 years, maybe 25 years, but not 150 years. Uh, it might look like that, but it's not. So unless, of course, uh, um, it might happen, I'm not saying no, but I doubt it is like that. So basically people have to get their facts right. Just because someone writes something on, and do some kind of calculations, uh, although they're doing that basically to bring awareness, it's not the reality. These are really sensational stuff uh, that we see there. 150 years, I doubt it. But, yeah, 20, 25 years more realistic from my point of view. And look at this right now. You have a good example. We were 2012 on EB1. Now we jumped to 2016. We were 2007 last month on EB2 India, and we jumped to 2009. And EB3, same thing, 2003, now 2009. So check the visa built in, <coughs> and you will see that the movement doesn't really follow the pattern that most people think they do. Uh, and now... For those who need uh, help on, on adjustment of status now, if their dates are becoming current, feel free to reach out to us. <coughs> I'm sorry. Feel free to reach out to us at 510-742-5887, website attorneyonair.com or piralilaw.com. And to let people know that, I think we have one caller, right? Hello? Hello? Uh, hey, Sean. Hey, I mean, okay, I mean, sorry, I thought you. Uh, so, I mean, give give me a few more minutes, and then I'll I'll, sure. I'll do I think uh, another. No worries. Minute. So, yeah, thank you, Amit, for being there. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, I just wanted to recap before Amit uh, takes over today, and um, I'm having a sore, uh, <laughs> my throat is kind of aching, so I apologize for my voice, and I wanted to mention that one of the things that you have to look at. Uh, perspective of people that they are missing a lot is the fact that things doesn't really go um, as um, people expect all the time. So you have to be able to, to be resilient, you have to be able to get back on your horse, and you have to have backup positions, right? One of the backup positions, of course, if you can jump on EB1 and you can carry, take that priority date from the EB2 and move it there, 
or also a backup position might be to have a, a petition in Canada. So at least if things are not working out, you can go to Canada hanging there until things get better and come back. Things are not going to definitely get better in the next few years because this was expected from the time of the new administration. But one of the things what we know is if you get a good lawyer, at least your chances are increased. That doesn't mean for sure you'll win. And, uh, of course, we, we don't pretend to be the, the, uh, the best, but we still got, are pretty much good with approvals, and we're still getting a lot of approvals. So feel free to reach out to our office, 510-742-5887. And also, if you, if you want to uh, check our updates, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Like I say, youtube.com slash and again, um, ladies and gentlemen, today, uh, whatever I'm telling you today is, is only for educational purposes. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. One of the things that uh, many people are, um, are making mistakes right now is to rely too much on those forums. The forums are good guidelines, but they are not the law. So remember, you want the law, you want to know you can check the law yourself or have an attorney analyze it for you because even checking the statutes is not good enough. Experience makes a difference, so please check that before you make any move. Thank you very much for listening. We'll be back next week the same time, and also that show will be replaying on Friday night, which is basically early Saturday at midnight. And I think Amit is there. Amit, are you there?